team is down. Their operational status is unknown. They were carrying a military transmission card. It's vital you retrieve that card as it contains encoded data needed to send the distress signal to the fleet. They're the last post to get reinforcements. Find that card and find it fast. Exceeding safe levels. Warning. Coolant rod 2 offline. Main reactor operation temperature exceeding safe levels. Paul Rad, Chief Technical Officer for the NPRO facility. During my weekly inspection of the coolant system, I discovered yet another safety violation. As I've stated repeatedly, our service manuals must be followed to the letter. Now, this includes changing back filters for the coolant system on schedule and not when maintenance gets around to it. As you know, unclean back filters will create pressure inside the coolant system's release tubes. Even a minor disruption in a release tube can dislodge or destroy its coolant rod, overheating the core and possibly sending the entire facility up in smoke. Now let me be clear, if I see this again, the team responsible will be transferred to sewage treatment before the day is over. Paul Rad, Chief Technical Officer for the NPRO facility. I appreciate UAC's concerns following the number of stress-related illnesses spreading throughout the base. However, I don't understand why we require such a large detail of armed security bots in NPRO. Now, you may disagree, but I trust my team's mental condition far more than whatever programming is running inside those bots. Which brings me to the reason for this report. Today, one of my best engineers, Patrick Thomas, was nearly shot when a bot refused his clearance. That's right, shot. Luckily, a nearby team from maintenance caught up to it and smashed it with a pipe wrench before it could chase Pat down. Now, it'll be days before he's ready to return to work, and I don't think you'll ever get him close to one of those bots again. 
Our jobs are difficult enough without needing to avoid getting shot. If we're gonna be treated like prisoners, I respectfully request that you afford us the courtesy of being guarded by people instead of machines. Audio log of weapon analyst Teresa Chazar, dated November 3rd, 2145. I'm pleased to report that the preliminary tests on the ammo storage in the new Mach 3 plasma gun has far exceeded our expectations. We've realized a full 50% gain in the storage capacity of ammo packs as a result of utilizing techniques engineered in the Alpha Lab's molecular compactor. I believe with the ongoing compaction research, we will reach our goal of three times the plasma storage currently available in standard ammo packs. I would also like to mention that all of the employees here at the NPRO plant have been very helpful and quite eager to accommodate all of my requests. For security reasons, I have locked the plasma gun and the extra ammo in locker 063 with door code 972. End of lock. Transmission card. If Swan gets his hands on it, I don't know what he'll do.
doors now open. Steve Hammer, service technician. Since Private Swenson wigged out, shot up that drink machine, then lit himself up with a plasma gun, we've all been a bit nervous. All of us in maintenance knew he was losing it. Finally, when that darn drink machine wouldn't accept his credits, he lost it. Started swearing up and down. You had to laugh when that machine lit up, but before any of us could react, he fed himself enough plasma to power an office building. There wasn't enough head to clean up. Just vapor. It's a bad thing to happen to anyone. Anyway, I know with all the psych problems we've had lately, we need the additional security, but when the guards start going nuts... I don't know, all this extra weapons and ammunition... I mean, do we really need so much firepower laying around? Well, a couple of us decided to lock up all of the unsecured plasma rounds we could find. The code is 734. I think we'll all sleep a bit better tonight knowing it's locked up.
Get your ass to the communications facility as quickly as possible. We've got to get that message to the fleet. Steve Hammer, service technician. 
Since Private Swenson wigged out, shot up that drink machine, then lit himself up with a plasma gun, we've all been a bit nervous. All of us in maintenance knew he was losing it. Finally, when that darn drink machine wouldn't accept his credits, he lost it. Started swearing up and down, and you had to laugh when that machine lit up. But before any of us could react, he fed himself enough plasma to power an office building. There wasn't enough head to clean up. Just vapor. It's a bad thing to happen to anyone. Anyway, I know with all the psych problems we've had lately, we need the additional security. But when the guards start going nuts... I don't know, all this extra weapons and ammunition. I mean, do we really need so much firepower laying around? Well, a couple of us decided to lock up all of the unsecured plasma rounds we could find. The code is 734. I think we'll all sleep a bit better tonight knowing it's locked up. This is the audio log of controller James Holliday, dated September 24th, 2145. The recent transport issues from Site 3 have caused the board to call a formal inquiry. We'll study weight limits and suggest better ways to provide protection for Site 3 artifacts. Our equipment... Damn it. Hey, it's good, eh? What? Finish this thing. Service lift called to station. This is the audio log of Officer Ron Ridge dated October 16th, 2145. Recent transport tunnel accidents are causing major headaches for both supply and maintenance. Each accident caused is an estimated one to three hour delay in what are mostly time sensitive shipments. It's becoming evident that certain junctions need safety adjustments as well as recommitment to driving safety than all personnel. The Unprotocom Center route has shown the biggest increase in accidents over the past six months. Safety signs and improved lighting are needed throughout the main junctions over the stretch of tunnels and paths. Absolutely, recreational vehicle passage should be allowed during peak hours. All personnel should use monorail travel whenever possible to keep cargo shipments flowing smoothly.
Exit now accessible. Communications facility yet? You gotta get that message to the fleet now. Watch out for Campbell and Swan. Those UAC suits don't give a damn luck what happens to any of us. I gotta move on.
power fluctuations in many communications routes are 48 and 6. Attempting insulation reroute. Communication system overload. Communications shut down. System computers are showing all off base communication down. It's that fool Swan. You're gonna have to find another way to send that message. Make your way to the satellite room and manually establish a link from there. Base schematics are showing the quickest way is through engineering. You can't fail, Marine. Get that message sent. This is the audio log of Officer Ron Ridge, dated October 16, 2145. Recent transport tunnel accidents are causing major headaches for both supply and maintenance. Each accident caused an estimated one to three hour delay in one of most time sensitive shipments. It's becoming evident that certain junctions need safety adjustments as well as recommitment to driving safety by all personnel. The M Protocom Center route has shown the biggest increase in accidents over the past six months. Signs and good lighting needed throughout the main junctions over the stretch of tunnels and paths. Absolutely, no recreational vehicle passes should be allowed during peak hours. All personnel should use monorail travel whenever possible to keep cargo shipments flowing smoothly. This is the audio log of technician Seamus, dated October 16th, 2145. Our relatively new remote module replacement procedures are taking some time for maintenance technicians to adjust to. In the long run, it's a much safer, quicker, and easier method. Once a technician receives a call, he simply locates the problem module and gives a replacement command through the remote terminal located in the main comm lock. This will initiate the replacement procedure as well as create a repair report and notify the repair team of an incoming module. Some minor repairs can be done on site with normal equipment. I'm hoping the new system will need less and less use once the source of the recent power fluctuations is located and solved. The system is built to handle most other things with its automated recovery system.
This is the uh, audio log of Officer Ben Wolf, dated October 7th, 2145. <clears throat> Recent uh, unauthorized transmissions have been uncovered in the off-site redundant logs. These logs are usually not validated, but uh, an unscheduled audit has shown significant activity. More investigating will be done to get to the bottom of this matter. Particularly interesting are transmission blocks D4560 and uh, DE3288, which have no link to the base system. Or to follow. The source of the invasion was from the main portal here in Delta. After you send that transmission, get here as quickly as possible. System shows Swan and Campbell are still in the area. Watch out for them. And get that transmission sent. established. Marine, you hear me? Back off from that console. Do not call for reinforcements. We don't know what the hell is going on here. And until we do, this area remains under UAC control. Cancel that transmission. Satellite connection established. Transmission terminated. We did the right thing. 
Until we know what's happening here, we need to keep ourselves sealed off from everyone else. The monorail entrance looks clear. Meet up with us there. We need to reach the Delta Complex and stop this. Green, you have just violated a direct order. Get your ass back to that console and send that transmission. Green, this is your last chance to get...
Warning. Flow control system failure. Toxins identified. Execute cooling procedure. This is the audio log of Nikola Sedgway, member of UAC Mars Hazmat Response Team, dated October 1st, 2145. We have concluded that the Martian atmosphere is wreaking havoc on the exhaust valve seals in the standard number 5 disposal drums. The engineers cannot explain the high level of contaminants in our internal atmosphere. The air scrubbers and filtration systems all seem to be operating at normal levels, it is a small layer of particulate is making it into the storage areas. That is what caused the lockdown yesterday. EAP Director Charles Hollis informs me that the personnel won't be harmed by these contaminants in the air, but we've seen that they do cause a corrosive reaction when introduced to the rubber compounds used in the storage systems. Effective immediately, all number five disposal drums must be locked away in at least a class two rated transport medium. Assessment ends.